Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm a person wearing a blue Delivery Hero hoodie presenting at Airflow 2023 Summit with the title called Airflow at Delivery Hero, running a data mesh with almost 500 Airflow instances. I would like to present how Delivery Hero uses Airflow as a central component of data mesh and with a motivation how other teams can use uh, data uh, Airflow to use uh, similarly in their data platforms. Main topics covered during the presentation would be Delivery Hero introduction, how global and different uh, brands are run by Delivery Hero, an internal project called Data Hub, uh, which um, how we are using Airflow inside that and implementing the data mesh. Then we would be covering different use cases and customizations done uh, while implementing the solution. Um, then some key takeaways and towards the end, if we would be having some extra time, we might have some fun stuff. So we might be skipping Q&A. Let's see. Okay, who we are. Delivery Hero is a global organization working in more than 70 countries worldwide, powered by tech, but driven by people. As the world's leading local delivery platform, our mission is to deliver an amazing experience, fast, easy and to your door. As one of the Europe's largest tech platform, let's take a look at the journey of the uh, company for more than a decade. Founded in 2011 in Berlin with some uh, acquisitions done, grew quite rapidly, did a successful IPO in 2017, hit 1 million orders mark, but actually it did it five folds uh, um, with five million orders per day uh, in November 2020. Man, that's quite a lot of orders and definitely some data to play with. And recently we, we did another acquisition of Glovo, so the acquisition train doesn't stop for this organization. If you are from or have been to Asia, Middle East, South America, um, and Europe, few of these logos might sound familiar. If anybody knowing Korea, a Korean language in this uh, room, the last logo in black actually stands for VUVA or VUVA Bros. Going further, there are seven major tech platforms that are empowering all of these different brands across the world. This small dot with VUVA from geographic standpoint looks very small, but you would be surprised with the amount of GMV and revenue that this uh, country creates for the organization. Okay, going further, since now you know that the company is spread across various continents with different local teams and their requirements, let's brag about few numbers, why not? Uh, more than 10K DAGs running, um, 10 million tasks per month with spread across multiple Airflow instances. 45 is the count of total domain data units, which is abbreviated as DDU. Uh, keep this number in uh, this uh, uh, DDU in your mind. This word would be used few times uh, in the presentation further on. But in simple terms, it's just like a function or a department in the organization. Now, the question is, how big of the data is being handled by all of this airflow? Around, 20, 20, uh, around 22K tables are inside the global data mesh with a size of around 12 petabytes of data, sorry. 15 million queries process around 274 petabytes of data per month, and this number is growing ever so fast. Looking at most of the activities happening in the data landscape, one day I was just sitting around and I'm like, man, what are we doing? No, no, don't laugh at me, I, I'm, I'm serious. Look at the petabytes, a lot of tasks running, and so on and so forth. So actually, what are we really doing? An answer maybe came to my mind, something like, some stakeholder needs visibility of something. Let me try to explain this a bit. The management sometimes uh, asks for the visibility of a report, but the object they are more interested in is a KPI. Taking the example of any data analyst or a scientist, he would like to have access to a warehouse or a storage bucket, whatnot, but the object they are looking at 
is maybe a table or different files. Same goes with data engineers trying to access the source and then the versatility of the objects might be a little bit more including API and endpoints for them. Before going any further, uh, I would like to take a moment to appreciate all the great work the data community is doing, enabling uh, data-driven de decisions across the globe. So if you would be kind enough to do a round of applause for each one of you inside the room for the amazing work that you guys do. Cool. Um, let's move on further then. A workflow with no annotations, let's put some labels together. On the left-hand side, you see some backend databases, files, being processed, written to some target tables. Then uh, another process starts reading data from these targets, but now this becomes the source for this process. Could be a machine learning pipeline. Uh, further, you could be doing some aggregations or transformations, and then writing these results to a table. They all sound pretty familiar data workflows in most organizations, right? Another way to look at the same workflows is by adding some functionalities in these um, workflows. For an ETL pipeline, you might be doing data ingestion. Heavy compute resources might be running for machine learning pipelines. And then access control and reporting could be the main factors for any analytical pipeline. These days, some specialized data products are being built, which use specific infrastructure on the side. It's a pretty interesting topic, but maybe for some other day. Same workflow, um, segregated with actors performing different actions. Data and system engineers on the ETL side, the ever so expensive data scientists and machine learning engineers, and the data analysts perform different activities um, across these different workflows. Now, most of you be like, man, we know all of this thing already. You wasting kind of my time. <laughs> maybe yes, but. Uh, what I want to say is, do you guys recall the decentralized uh, framework that we discussed with Delivery Hero, where each one of the platform definitely would have all of these actors trying to perform the same actions, right? Now, if I replicate this thing across other departments inside the same organization as well, um, they might be doing the same thing. For example, marketing, tech, e-commerce, logistics, and so forth, so and so forth. Okay, now this takes us in the direction of data mesh, requiring a flexible solution which can be tailored to the needs of self-owned data products. Who can do it? We are at the Airflow Summit, right? So you guys know the answer. Airflow comes to the rescue and Delivery Hero has put Airflow at the center of its data mesh architecture. Let's look at the journey of development um, while you are developing this platform. So from a local environment, putting something to production and then adding some additional feature makes you feel more cool and cool, so and so forth. In terms of um, Airflow executor analogy, I would like to say if somebody moves from a local or sequential executor to salary, and then maybe he moves to a Kubernetes executor, and uh, at the end he's using salary Kubernetes executor, which kind of has most of the things from everywhere. Just a funny thing regarding the desk executor, I had no clue where to put this guy. So apologies if someone is using this thing. Let's go further. So first thing, everybody would like to create a local environment. Um, we start from the official uh, Airflow image from Docker Hub. Next thing we do is we add some requirements um, which are needed um, for our pipelines. Then we wrap this thing up inside some additional variables uh, inside a Docker file. Next thing we know is we are using Colima inside Delivery Hero for running um, container runtimes. You could use Docker, de Docker Desktop or anything you like. And then Postgres uh, as the backend, web server, and the scheduler are, are up and running by running few of the commands that you see on the right hand side. Okay, now you like local environment is up and running. Let's put things to production. We again start with Airflow at the center. Then Delivery Hero chooses Google Cloud with Kubernetes engine um, enabling node auto provisioning to run 
Airflow workloads. Next thing, we have created a custom Helm chart um, with all the components required for running an Airflow. Uh, and then uh, we are having an Airflow web server scheduler with a Cloud SQL um, with Postgres behind up and running. Next thing, developers would like to push some code, right? So what we do is we add a GitHub repo. A developer does a git push. Typical CI CD runs. Delivery Hero is shipping the DAG and the source code inside uh, the Docker image, uh, baked inside the Docker image. We push this image to the container registry. Some secrets coming from secret manager. And next thing we know that the code is shipped on production. Now, adding security with Cloudflare, Okta, and Google authentication at the top, users are able to access the Airflow web server UI. Lastly, the Kubernetes executor used with the scheduler, each task runs as a pod doing the thing that the developer asks it to do. Okay, production thing is up and running. Another question which comes to our mind generally is, should we go with single or multiple Airflow? Typical question. Single versus multiple multi-tenancy. In 2022, um, Airflow Summit, Yarek and Matus gave a talk saying, the start of the talk is like, multi-tenancy is coming. We all know it's coming, but we don't know when. And there is a talk happening right after my talk, I think, about multi-tenancy as well. So we could go there and check it out uh, in another room. So looking at the global and decentralized nature of Delivery Hero, what we did was we said, let's give um, an isolated environment for each of the teams um, inside the organization. What we did was the foundation team created two separate GCP projects, one called Control and the other one called Storage. Control, as the name suggests, has some monitoring, logging, secret manager, and stuff like this. Storage has container registry that we just discussed, and it contains the Terraform state for the central infrastructure management. Next thing, a foundation team creates a new domain data unit, you remember, DDU, right? Um, in a separated GCP uh, project, isolated from anything else, provide a production and few staging environments to each DDU. A lot of different services from GCP are pre-enabled, allowing developers faster developer experience. Now this uh, box is replicated across multiple times inside the organization, enabling the data mesh architecture. Cloud IAM is used to provide further access to different GCP services. Uh, this uh, um, access is reviewed and uh, monitored by the data foundation team ensuring best security practices are in place. Going further, taking a look at the repository structure, uh, there is a central rep repo called Data Hub Airflow. On the left-hand side, you have a DAGs folder, but inside we have given one dedicated folder for each domain data unit, where they can put any code that they like with the right code owners in place, giving them full autonomy. Typically, inside the folder, you would see some YAML files um, controlling access, data quality, curation. You might also see a lot of different Python codes and fancy things as well, but for some other time. On the right-hand side, you see a core data hub framework, which actually allows teams to be more productive in their development cycle, where we are providing them out of the box, alerting global configuration, policy tags, and uh, other operators which support them to do the things faster. There is a team maintaining all of this code um, uh, centrally, but there are teams from other departments collaborating on this inside the organization as well. Looking at the last 30 day activity of this repo, it actually is pretty cool that there is more than 3000 pull requests merged by over 400 people Actually, in the last 30 days, more than 500 people did some activity on the repo, which is quite cool and uh, a very live re repo for any data platform. Going further, now looking at averaging more than 100 deployments happening every day and so many 
developers uh, collaborating on this thing together. I don't think so one staging environment should be enough uh, for running their tests. There have been previously some very good talks in the last Airflow summits um, about the DAG, about the development experience. I would recommend you guys to check them out. The links are here. So Data Hub created dynamic development environment for each developer with actually close to no setup required. Let's take a look at the steps how a developer can spin up their own environment. The only thing he needs to do is create a new branch from his uh, from the main branch, make a git push, go to the Airflow UI. Um, in the UI, just pick the environment that he would like to use, put in the name of the branch on which he would like to do test, click submit, and it's done. A fully isolated environment is up and running in the cloud with git sync enabled with a 60 second duration interval, meaning it's like working on your local environment, right? And the on-demand availability keeps the cost low very scalable, you can create as many environments as you like. Currently, we are using Kubernetes Executor on the development environment as well, which um, has one benefit where when you run a new job, it runs as a pod, right? And the pod fetches the new uh, code from GitHub, meaning the developer doesn't even need to wait 60 seconds for the job to run. He can just run the job, it will pull the new code from GitHub, and the job should be running. But you guys know Kubernetes executor is slightly slower compared to the local environment. Going further, take a look at how this thing actually works behind scenes. So uh, most of us know custom resource definitions inside Kubernetes. Um, the foundation team maps all the templates required to run uh, Airflow um, inside templates, and then this definition is created. We wrap this definition inside the operator SDK which is a fancy name, but you can call it at the end of the day, it allows you uh, with an API inside Kubernetes, just like any backend API, you can request uh, with some specific, um, uh, let's say values and it would return you something. Uh, and in our case, this something would be a Airflow environment. Now going further, we created a front end uh, user interface, which you just saw in the last slide. Using the Flask App Builder, a custom plugin was created. Then a Python, a Python code for the environment management was created, which essentially is just making this call to the operator. The call is called a Kubernetes function, create namespace custom objects. I have put some links in the slides. You can check them out later on. The result for this thing is there would be a fresh new environment with a different URL and all the backend behind scenes um, ready for the developer. And this is one of the reasons why we had to go with the custom Helm chart rather than the official one. Going on further is um, secret managers is one thing which sometimes come into play for developers. So we created a sync connection process which actually copies connections from one environment to another staging environment where the environment is up and ready for any developer with all the credentials they need. Then on the lower side, the, there is a table which explains which user is using which environment, which branch they have deployed. Once the developer is done with testing, he can easily click on delete environment. Everything is cleaned up, so it saves a lot of cost as well. Moving on further, um, separated isolated uh, environments create some problems as well. One of them is cross DAG dependency. Let's try to figure it out together. Take the example of DDU number one. They are trying to run a DAG which creates an orders table or updates it depending on the logic. Now there is DDU number two which would like to use this orders table. Oops, sorry. Yeah, so this dependency. So most of you would be like saying, yeah, why not use DAG dependency? But actually they are not in the same Airflow environment, right? So we need to figure out something. Maybe give the access to the metadata DB because all the status for the task is there. But actually metadata DB doesn't have enough information, right? Plus giving access to the metadata DB, especially to another team on your production thing could cause severe performance issues as well. So how did we solve this thing? Did you, uh, so the only thing we did is simple. 
uh, added an additional task called update metadata. What actually does is it um, adds the metadata properties, which you are seeing here, inside a BigQuery table called DAG execution. This DAG execution table, um, the other teams inside Delivery Hero have read access to it already, allowing other teams to use it. How the DDU number two does it, they add the configuration inside their checks saying which table they depend on. Is it a blocking table or not? How many times should I retry with the wait times specified? The check um, uh, external table task makes a decision based on these configurations and saying is the data ready or not, triggers the next task, and in this way, we have solved the cross DDU dependency problem in a fairly simple manner. Uh, the story doesn't finish here, right? We might be thinking, hey, everything is done, my dependencies are resolved, but the problem comes is, in some of our airflows, there are more than 50 to 100 um, developers sharing the environment together. Then, the same multi-tenancy problem, right? So, I'll be just quick here. Um, this RBAC, which was discussed some minutes before, we are using some custom roles, which we have created. Um, and al allowing the teams with a YAML configuration, they can easily configure per DAG uh, level uh, accesses. There is one more concept we introduced called workspace, which actually allows teams uh, inside a main DDU, a sub team, we have created an additional folder. There are some additional code owners put in place and so on and so forth. Uh, I wouldn't go into the depth of these things uh, because of time as well. But if you guys have implemented something similar or you are interested in seeing how we have implemented those things, on Thursday, Delivery Hero is organizing the workshop called Airflow and Data Mesh. So I, I highly encourage you guys to join me there. Um, many participants have already registered. Looking forward to seeing many of you guys there. Okay, going further, um, some of the key takeaways and challenges. With takeaway, don't think about this takeaway, but um, something else. I know you might be hungry. Uh, trust me, there are a few minutes left on my side. Going further. So knowing your organizational structure, in my opinion, is one of the very important factors. Sometimes a more decentralized solution could be complicated compared to the value delivered. Implement what best fits your needs. Trust me, there's going to be a lot of um, uh, new technologies in the, uh, in the market, um, but they might sound fancy, but maybe that doesn't fit your needs. Community building is an important factor as well, um, where collaboration is a key to build a successful platform in such a decentralized fashion. We are humans. We always make mistakes. One suggestion would be thinking of adding validations and guardrails around the critical processes would help keep the stability a bit higher. Shared responsibility is a bit tricky to implement um, a good stable product there. So maybe having some good support framework can also be a key factor. So, and going further, it's always work in progress. Then I would just like to give a big thanks to the team who has implemented and worked pretty hard on this project. Feel free to get in touch with uh, them as well. Uh, then there is this community picture slide with all the contributors inside the Delivery Hero organization working on this project, making it a big success. Uh, I would like just to take one minute um, on an idea about open source data platform to this amazing um, audience sitting here and the online community as well. Looking at the different talks, I have seen different organizations working on building kind of similar solutions uh, in different talks, right? What if we could have an easy to configure, plug and play system or solution, I don't know, or even an Airflow operator called data platform operator, I don't know. So I would leave this thing uh, with a thought for you guys to think about, I would be around to catch up with you guys if you wanna discuss this thing more. Uh, I really appreciate all of your attention and time. Uh, thank you very much. Before finishing, um, I'm just thinking, since I'm the second last uh, presenter here, so um, I might take the questions offline. I just have a fun demo. 
So you have seen in these days, there couldn't be any talk finishing without Gen AI, right? So I tried to follow the same pattern. I asked myself a question, how could I link Delivery Hero, Airflow, and Gen AI together? So the next thing I did was, I went to the YouTube of Airflow Summit, fetched all the transcripts from all the previous talks, right? Sent this thing to a LLM, and what we have now is kind of a chatbot which we can ask questions what has happened in the past inside the Airflow Summit in the past. Let's ask it a quick question. Um, and you guys can think about one question which we can ask this model. Let's see how it goes. Um, tell a fun fact about Airflow Summit. Trust me, I'm a bit faster with typing with two hands. Let's see. Airflow is a conference that br brings together the Airflow community to learn, but that's not a fun fact. Let's ask a question. Who is Yarek? Yeah, he there knows this thing. Yarek is a contributor. But I don't know what this voice lecturing dubbing thing is. I was playing around with this thing. Let me add his last name and see what this guy does. He declares him as a Polish professional footballer. Beautiful. I have no idea what he's trying to do. So anybody has one last question that we would like to test this guy here, if I, we have time? I don't think we have time, unfortunately. Okay. We're a little past the hour, but uh, thank you so much for okay. your talk. Thank, thank you, you for making the Airflow Summit AI. And if you want to ask it a question yourself, track him down right after this. He'll be wandering around, and I believe he'll be here all week. Thank you.